In this video, we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law. So ideal gas law actually relates the temperature, pressure, volume, and the moles. And it's different than the simple gas laws because in simple gas laws, you will have two sets of your variables. You could have two sets of temperatures or two sets of pressures or two sets of volume. But in this particular case, you have only one set of everything, but they are all related with one another. So when I relate, when I write down the ideal gas law, it's PV equals to NRT where obviously uh, the P is pressure, V is the volume, N is the moles, R is gas constant, T is your temperature. So you could, out of those four variables, remember your R is actually constant, which is 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters moles minus 1 Kelvin minus 1. So that's a constant, but then you have four other variables where you got pressure, volume, and the uh, moles and the temperature. So you could be given any three and you could be asked for the fourth one and vice versa. Uh, here, since we're using the R, you want to make sure your pressure must be in atmosphere and your volume must be in liters. So that's the only time where you have to really worry about the units of the pressure and the volume. In the simple gas laws earlier, we ha have said that it doesn't matter what units you use as long as you are using the same units for both sets. Okay, so then in addition to that, I want to talk about what's, uh, what an STP is. STP stands for the standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so for gases, your standard temperature is actually going to be 273 Kelvin, and uh, the pressure for the SDP is going to be one atmosphere. So you make sure you guys are aware of these conditions. Um, that's for the standard temperature pressure. And also know this conversion factor that at SDP, one mole of any gas. is actually going to be equal to 22.4 liters. It doesn't matter which particular gas you're talking about. If it's a one mole and if your pressure is one atmosphere and the temperature is 273, or another way of saying you're at STP condition, one mole is going to be 22.4 liters. And sometimes you use that quality to solve problems as well. Okay, well, we've been talking about the ideal gases, but what really makes an ideal gas? So let's talk about that. In real life, when we deal with these gas problems, they may not be very ideal. So there are some criteria a particular gas must met to be considered an ideal gas. So the first criteria is the size of the gas particles is negligibly small compared to the overall volume of the gas. So let's suppose I have this container right here, and then this container have a particular gas, and it could be anything. Like let's suppose I have an N2 nitrogen gas in there. So the nitrogen gas is going to be very small compared to the overall volume. So when we look at these nitrogen gas particles, their collective volume is going to be very small compared to the overall container volume. And the other important thing, these gas molecules are fairly far away from one another and moving in random directions all the time. So they could be moving, uh, this could be moving down there, this particle could be moving here, this particle moving could be moving here. So they're always moving at high speed with ran in random direction. So that's the first criteria. If you bring those particles close to one another, then you're kind of moving away from the ideal behavior, then it's kind of going on to the real gases because they can start insert in interacting with one another. Those gas particles, they must not interact with one another when they are either colliding or passing one another. If they start showing interactions, which could be the attractive forces or the repulsive forces, then you are moving away from the ideal behavior. So make sure you know this criteria. 
Okay, so then the second criteria of these gas particles, the kinetic energy is actually going to be directly related to the temperature, the square root of the te uh, temperature uh, in Kelvin. So if I have the kinetic energy is going to be directly related to some temperature in Kelvin scale. If that, what that really means, if the temperature goes up, your kinetic energy goes up, and your velocity in turns also goes up. So if temperature increases, your kinetic energy also increases. And when your kinetic energy increases, your velocity of the molecules also increases. Because remember, the kinetic energy comes with the motion. If something has higher kinetic energy, it means it's moving faster. And uh, if you think realistically on real life, when you heat up something, what happens? The molecules move faster in that particular case. And if they're moving faster, it means they have higher kinetic energy. Okay, so obviously, like I said, these particles are moving in at random directions. They could be moving toward one another, or they could be moving toward, uh, onto, onto the walls of the container. So whenever they are either colliding with one another or they're colliding with the walls of the container, their collisions are considered to be completely elastic. Okay, so elastic collisions means they transfer their kinetic energy. So their kinetic energy is going to be conserved. So in elastic collision, the kinetic energy is conserved. If I give you a, a rough example of an inelastic collision, in real life collision, when you have two cars colliding, that's an example of inelastic collision because the kinetic energy is not conserved. As when two cars collide, there is going to be some heat produced, there is going to be some sound produced, and there is going to be some energy used to overcome the friction as well. So you lose a lot of the kinetic energy into those energy forms. But in this particular case, when these gas particles collide, there is no sound, there is no friction, there is just no heat produced. And as a result, the kinetic energy is going to be conserved. Another example of perfectly inelastic collision is when, in a, let's say, a big truck collides with a small car and they get stuck together, that's a in, in, completely inelastic collision. And that does not happen in case of gases. As soon as they collide, they separate away and they could have a very well exchange in the kinetic energy or they could retain their kinetic energy, but the, uh, the total kinetic energy must be conserved before and after the collision. So that's what that really means. So as long as these uh, gases kind of uh, have these three criteria met, they're going to be considered a, a ideal gas. Now, I do want to mention the gases behave ideally at high temperature. So if you have a high temperature and low pressure, that's the typical conditions for the gas to behave highly. Well, why high temperature? If it's at a high temperature, that means they are moving very fast. And if they are moving very fast, they have a very small chances of showing any interactions with the gas molecules. And that's what you really don't want to have in order to consider a particular gas to be an ideal gas. OK, now why low temperature? Well, for a low temperature, I mean, not low temperature, low pressure, um, for with low pressure, the volume is going to be high. So if the volume is big, your gas particles are going to be far away from one another, and they have a very minimum chance of showing any interactions with the gas particles. If they show interactions with, um, uh, with one another, then they are not ideal anymore. So that's the criteria for these uh, uh, for a gas to be considered an ideal gas. Make sure you are aware of this temperature and pressure condition. Okay, let's look at this uh, question here. It says, at what temperature with 0.654 moles of neon gas occupies this 12.30 liters at 950 mm of mercury? So let me just go ahead and write down what we are given. So I have the moles to be 0.654. I got the volume to be 12.3 liters, and I got the pressure to be 950 
mm of mercury. So I'm given one set of everything and we're asked to figure out the temperature. So if we're given one set of everything, that means I would have to use this ideal gas equation to solve the temperature. Because I know the pressure, I know the volume, I know the moles, and I can go ahead and calculate the temperature. So if I rearrange this equation, it's going to be PB over NR. You just have to make sure they are in the units that you could really use in this particular question. Well, if I'm using R, the condition is your pressure and volume must be in the right unit. So your volume must be in liters, which it's already in liters, and your pressure must be in atmosphere, which we don't have uh, the pressure given in atmosphere. So what I need to do, I need to go ahead and change this mm of mercury into the atmosphere. So remember, one atmosphere is 760 mm of mercury. So our mm of mercury cancels out. So your math here is going to involve 760 divided, um, 950 rather, divided by 760. So it's going to be 1.25 atmosphere. Okay, so seems like I have I got everything in there. So let's just go ahead and plug it in the numbers. So your pressure is 1.25 atmosphere. Your volume is going to be 12.3 liters. And that's going to be divided by the moles, which is 0.654 moles. And your R is going to be 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters moles minus 1, Kelvin minus 1. Sorry about that. I kind of went all the way down there. Okay, so your different units will cancel out. Your ATM cancels out with ATM. And then I can say my liters will cancel out with one another. And I can also say your moles will cancel out with the moles. So what's, what are you left out with is the Kelvin temperature. So that's going to be uh, the units that we're actually looking for. So let's just go ahead and do this math. I got 1.25 times 12.3 and divide that by 0.654 times 0.0821. So it comes out to be 286.3. Okay, so there are going to be times when they ask you the final temperature to be in Celsius scale. Uh, make sure you must do your cal calculations in Kelvin, and once you have your final answer, then convert it to a Celsius scale. So for example, if I want to change this to a Celsius scale, I would use the Kelvin scale equals the Celsius scale plus 273.15. So that means I just go ahead and plug it in there. So 283, 286.3 rather, equals to the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. So the bottom line is you're going to be subtracting that from. Uh, um, 273, which is going to give you roughly 13 degrees Celsius. You may be a little bit off, but I'm just guessing it here. So it's going to be roughly 13 degrees Celsius in the Celsius scale. Okay, what about using this, uh, looking at this question? It's asking to calculate the volume of one grams of N2 gas at this temperature, at this pressure, and the temperature. So let me just go and write down what we are given. And you may want to pause the session here and actually solve this on your own and see what you get. So pressure is 1.3 atmosphere. Your temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Make sure you change that to Kelvin, which is going to be 298 Kelvin, because you got to add 273 to it. And uh, we're trying to find volume. We don't have that. And then in addition to that, we're given the mass to be 1 grams of nitrogen. Well, if I want to use the ideal gas equation here, because that's what it seems like we have one set of everything, which is going to be PB equals NRT. And in this particular case, your volume would be NRT divided by the pressure. Well, I have everything except the moles. Here, we're given the mass. We're given the one grams of uh, nitrogen. 
Well, the question is, is that going to be hard to find the moles from one grams of nitrogen? Well, it should not be because remember, you can easily find the moles from the masses by using the molar mass. So it's going to be one mole of nitrogen divided by 28 grams of nitrogen because that's the molar mass for the nitrogen. So it's just going to be one divided by 28. So let's see what that comes out to be. That's 0 0.036 moles of nitrogen. So now we got everything. So let's go back and plug it in there. So I'm just going to plug it in number in this particular case. So 0 0.036 times 0 0.0821 times your temperature is going to be 298 and divide that by the pressure which is 1.3 atmosphere. Okay, so your final answer here, I got 0 0.036 times 0 0.0821 times 298 and divide that by 1.3 it's going to be 0.678 liters so if I want to change that to milliliters well that's going to be 678 milliliters so you make sure you're able to go back and forth between the milliliters and liters quickly Okay, what about this next one here? It says one gram of H2 at STP. It's going to be very similar, okay, within this previous one. Uh, obviously, you're dealing with hydrogen gas and you're dealing with an STP. Well, what's the temperature and pressure at STP? The pressure is going to be one atmosphere and your temperature is going to be 273 Kelvin. Okay, so if you know that, uh, you should be able to figure out uh, your volume easily. So I have one gram of hydrogen. Make sure you are able to convert that to the moles first. So one mole of hydrogen divided by two grams, because remember that's the molar mass for the hydrogen gas. So it's one over two, which is just 0.5 moles. And since it's done in, at an SDP condition, either if you want, you can go ahead and use this formula, PV equals NRT, or I can just use this conversion factor that we have learned at STP. Any gas, one mole is going to be equal to 22.4 liters. So why not just use that and make life easier? Because we're given 0.5 moles, so I'll just go ahead and write that down here. So 0.5 moles of hydrogen gas, and then I can just use this uh, conversion factor where, uh, where I would say 22.4 liters of this hydrogen gas is going to be equivalent to one mole of the hydrogen gas. So the moles cancels out and 0 .4, 0 0.5 times 22.4 uh, is going to give you 11.2 liters of hydrogen gas. Even if you use this PBNR team, uh, that's going to be fine, but that's just a little bit time consuming. You want to you wanna make sure you're aware of this uh, conversion factor as well that's uh, used at STP conditions. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, not just related to this particular, these particular examples, if you have just any random questions about the ideal gas laws or any gas laws in generic, uh, feel free to leave the comments below.